to the Clippers back in 2008 years in the league. Darius Miles joins us now. We were just all complaining about how getting old sucks, um, but we don't have to talk about it now. We can talk about happy things, Darius. Uh, your co-host, Quentin Richardson, was was uh, on the show a few months ago. He said that when you were in high school, people started calling you Baby KG. I don't know how guys feel about being compared to other dudes, contemporaries, but he, that you could play anything on the court, no worries. Did you like the comparisons? Yeah, I loved it. I loved it. Uh, it gave me a little bit of fame. Uh, they started it at Nike camp, um, you know, Q and all them, they all from Chicago. So uh, I was skinny, tall, dark skin, and they were just like, man, that's baby KG. And the whole camp started calling me. And after that, that's what it was. <laughs> Easy enough. D Miles, when you were in high school, you also you were invited to Michael Jordan's camp. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And there's rumors that you guys played one on one. Was there was there any truth to that? No, I didn't play on one on one. Uh, I played against him my first time playing, and uh, you know everybody was kind of scared to guard him. So I, you know, I stepped up to the plate. I was only like going to be a, in tenth grade, so I stepped up to the plate like I guard him, and he just <laughs> like he just he hit every shot he took. But uh, I blocked his shot once. <laughs> I blocked the shot once, but after that game, he switched teams and made me play with him for the rest of the week. And, uh, and that showed that uh, it, it made me confident because it showed that he respected how hard I played and how competitive I was at high school against him. Man, that's Damn awesome. Great. And there's also stories how that is it true that he convinced you to not sign with and one and to sign with, with Nike and Jumpman? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we was going to Jordan camp every year since my sophomore year, every summer. And um, after my senior year, we went to Jordan, Santa Barbara Jordan camp again. And we was draped down in and one gear because they sent us so much stuff. And we was trying to get a Nike deal, but Nike was kind of, you know, BS. And so uh, we draped in and one. And when he looked at us, he was like, man, why y'all got that on? And we was like, we can't get a deal. You know, we want to be with Nike. And he was like, all right. So our agent called us that next morning and people knocking on our door and they sent us boxes and boxes of Jordan stuff. And he, my agent was like, what did y'all do? We was like, nothing. And he signed me and Q to Jordan and made Nike pay us. Oh, that's, that's perfect. <laughs> I love that. That, that led that led to you and Q doing uh, the Jordan commercial in, in 2002. You still you yeah. still get the packs. You still get the boxes. Uh, some here and there, not as many as they used to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <Yes. laughs> what's your what's your favorite what's your favorite peas that you got back in the day? Oh, the patent leathers. You know, that was my favorite ones. Uh, uh, leathers, any yeah. Any cover, uh, the patent leathers. They were just always. You just felt luxury and and it just felt like upper class when you had them patent letters on whether it was the grays the black and whites the uh, black and reds it's just you know it's like they fit yeah. perfect cool grays changed the game you put the cool yeah, grays cool on grays anything changed. you can hoop yeah. in them wear them to school whatever the cool grays yeah. is the was fancy uh okay coming out of high i mean you just mentioned the fact you're playing against mj in 10th grade it's just shocking um but you come out of high school what kind of pressure, if any, did you feel, or were you so young that maybe that didn't even register yet for you? Uh, it was a lot of pressure because, uh, you know, the team that I got drafted to, it was like a college team. Like, we, every other team was, you know, way older, way more mature. And um, back in that day, uh, a, lot of, a lot of organizations and a lot of players really wasn't wasn't fond of guys coming straight out of high school. So, you know, it's like we had to prove ourselves a little bit more because we skipped the process of college like everybody else. And, you know, when you go into a team and guys that been in college or guys that been in the league for a while, they like, man, you ain't finna let this high school guy come in and, you know, take spots. So it was, uh, it was a lot of pressure. Every, every game you had to prove yourself, you know, to get your peers, to get the respect from your peers. Did you ever even now think if you could do it all over again, would you have changed anything? Would you have gone to college? Had you given that thought? Was there a college you would have gone to? Yeah, you were yeah, so, you're committed to St. John's, right? 
Yeah, I committed to St. John's. Uh, before my senior year, uh, I committed to St. John's. Uh, but the coach, uh, Mike Jarvis, you know, great man. You know, he could have been telling me anything, but he was like, man, you're a top five pick, you know. Wow. You shouldn't, you shouldn't go to go to college. But I wouldn't change nothing. Uh, only time I miss college is when, you know, the guys had them college stories about the dorm room and all that other stuff. But outside of that, uh, nah. love the process, love the guys I came yeah. in to the league with. Ew. And, I would have been a higher saying, draft pick. I would have been a higher draft pick after my sophomore and junior year. I stayed all four years. It was so much fun. <laughs> Lou says no. Nah, hell no, D. -Ro hey, D. Miles, we did the right thing. Forget that dorm. We was we was in luxury Ritz Carlton's <laughs> in Four Seasons. We good. That's true. And there was no nil. We, we were at, we had to get bread under, <laughs> under the table. It wasn't legal like yeah. it is now. But you know, like it it, it didn't really change because with the Clippers, we was working out at Southwest Junior College. That's where our practice facility was. Mm -hmm. We had to use a gym, so it it really didn't feel like the league. It felt like halfway the league because Clippers weren't doing stuff like that back then. Yeah, I, listen, when I got drafted by the Sixers, we, we practiced at a, a spot called PCOM. It was like a medical college, and we used yeah. the gym. Like, we couldn't even come what? in and get extra shots or anything. They like, yo, the gym is booked up wow. for the rest of the day we when y'all done. We couldn't even take showers. So I, uh, I, we had to go home and take a shower. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I understand yeah. that experience. So when you came in, when you came in with the uh, with the Clips, your first, your first game was against Carl Malone and John Stockton, who was obviously... Yeah the legendary pick and rollers. How was how was that first game? What what was that experience like? Was you nervous? Man, it, it, it was surreal. I didn't know John Stockton was that big. Like, like you know, you see him on TV, he looked like a smaller guy, but he was he was real tall and big and then called Malone arms. So we kind of got into it with him and Olin Polony and all them. And, you know, we couldn't back down. And I just think back on, I was like, man, he would have kicked my ass if I would have ran up on him because I was sticks and bones. But his arms was so big and he was so big to get around him. And just the uh just the size of the game. We was way faster and quicker, but they they knew more than us. And then I that's when I really, really realized that this this game is a whole nother level. You gotta think it out too. Yeah, D Miles, during that same time on the clips, you were playing in the same building as the Shaq and Kobe three P team. And I always wonder, especially during those times, was there any beef? Like, was there je jealousy? Was there even more of a rivalry, like sharing the, that that same arena? No, nah, uh, we beat them every year. We beat them in the regular season, like once or twice. Uh, Shaq was like a big brother. When we got to LA, like he he took us in, like 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 we was little bros, you know. Invited us to his house, invited us to different events. Kobe was younger, so every time we played, Kobe was up for the challenge. And, you know, they, mm. they team was older. So Phil and Kobe used to always want to, like, demolish us. But uh, it really wasn't no beef or no problem or nothing like that. Uh, I think we kind of gra grabbed our fan base from the grassroots and, you know, came on up from that. They liked the way we played and how hard we played. That was the... Uh the Shaq is a cop phase. Um, always yes. great video and pictures from that era. Uh, is it true he pulled, pulled you over? Before. Yeah. The 405? yeah. <laughs> How'd that go? Yeah, he made me late for practice, pulled me over. I guess they didn't have practice. And man, he pulled me over, and the rest was history from there. I told him you got to pay my fine. He said, I got you. And I went on to practice. <laughs> What a fun thing to be able to do to friends. <laughs> Wait, were, did you know it was him immediately, by the way? Like, could you I, tell in your I rear view? I was, I was looking down. I was looking down in my glove compartment trying to grab all my proper paperwork. <laughs> and, oh and I looked up, I was no, like, man, you, you know he police for real. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. He act he actually police. He he told me stories about how he'll pull people over or um, go to people's houses and they think they're getting punked or it's a prank because it's Shaq. So they they don't take it serious. <laughs> but he wow, he, he actually po he a real police officer. That's awesome. Yeah, he, nah, legit, he legit. legit. I, go ahead. He, he legit. Nah, I, just, he I wanted to know you play. Nah, he, nah, he real twelve. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but I, w I wanted to ask you, man, you play, you only played two seasons with the Clips. Why do you think things ended so early, so quick? 
Uh, I think it's just the organization, just how they was how how they was ran. Uh, I don't like we had we had all that talent, but we had enough money to pay two superstars max money. There wasn't nobody on the team making no money or nothing like that. I just think that the organization really wasn't looking or believed in themselves to be a good organization. Wow. So Darius, after that year, you're traded to Cleveland, and that was before LeBron gets there. And that whole year, you're basically tanking to get the number one pick to get LeBron. What was that process like? Just knowing the ownership is trying to lose games to get this, you know, this next prodigy kid. Uh, I never lost like that ever in my life. Uh, I didn't didn't understand it completely. Uh, I was going to LeBron games. His games was way more packed than our games. Like, everybody was going to his games. So I was so hoping that we didn't have a game on the day that they had a game because, you know, his games was live. So uh, going to his game this whole senior year, but I've never been through that much losing. Like, I think we won 16 games out of 82. I ain't never felt nothing like that. Uh, it was an experience for me. But uh, the next year, the town changed when we got LeBron. Yeah, it's crazy when we think about the, the year before a team becomes great. Forget about what that felt like. At the end of that season, there was a, a local reporter that asked you guys about the possibility of LeBron coming to the Cavs. Carlos Boozer had said that the Cavs had better guys on the team. You know we're doing this. You said this. We got the video. Roll it. I don't think you can really just bring a high school player in and really just think your team going to really turn around like that. Baby Darius. All right. Um, it's one of those hot takes gone cold. <laughs> Is it weird to watch that now, knowing how it all played out? No, because uh, they just played clips and they edited it. If you really listen to everything that I said, I was taking up for LeBron. Like, they was trying to put this all this pressure on him. They was trying to do all this other stuff. Like, I was with LeBron like his senior year. I used to go over his house. I used to go to the games and all that stuff. We had a relationship before he came to to the, uh, Cleveland. So uh, if you really look at the whole interview and everything they saying, you know, I'm, I'm a country boy, so I probably use a lot of wording that they might not have understood in a slang type way. But in that statement, if you listen to everything I said, I was taken up for him because I was like, man, y'all ain't finna put pressure on my man like that to, to just turn something around like, and if you know what team we was on, we won 16 out of 82. It wasn't all happy, go lucky around there. Everything wasn't fine and dandy. So, you know, knowing what we went through last year, you're not gonna put no pressure on my man to come in and just turn this organization around and we was the worst team in the NBA like that. Like, it's never been done like that before. So, you know, when I see that clip, you know, it's, it's all love and good. You know, this is that new day and never where they take something and they try to run with it, but in all actuality, I was really taken up for him. Once that season started, though, did you know, like immediately, he was a he was a generational talent, and this was gonna be a this was gonna be a long ride. And did you see him still in 21 years, still being as dominant as he is? No, nah, I didn't see in 21 years that he was gonna have 40,000. Like that's <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, right. <laughs> but I knew he was a generational talent. I knew he was gonna be a good player. I knew he was gonna get, be a good player by watching him in high school. Like just how advanced his game was. And once he, you put him on the court, you take him off the court with high school guys and put him on the court with older guys, didn't nothing change. Like he just looked a, a little bit more faster. He looked like he jumped a little bit more high. Uh, but I knew it from training camp. I knew it from the summertime. We was all working out during the summertime, playing together. Like, he was something special. Uh, and an organization like that, they got him. They didn't really know what to do with him. Like, they had – I started point that year. I started the point. Ricky Davis was the two. LeBron was the three. Boozer was the four. Big Z was the five. And I struggled with that point guard because I felt LeBron should have ran point because the way his game was, it was like – he played so smoothly and got everybody involved, plus got buckets. But, you know, I just think the organization really off the rip didn't know what they was doing. He probably would have made the playoffs every year if if they was prepared for him. You had like a Don Nelson or something that make you run up and down the court, you know what I'm saying, run. Like, we really wanted to run a team. We was running like the Utah Jazz old offense. Mm.
Chandler. Lou, you got to follow <laughs> um, Darius, when you went to Portland, then you had your career high. You had 47 points. And that was coming off the bench against the Nuggets and Carmelo Anthony. What was that like? Was there extra juice there going against Melo? You just get high. How, how do you do that? How do you have 47 off the bench? Uh, it was just one of them nights. Uh, I had a good night before. You know, Lou might know something <laughs> about that. I had a good night before in Denver. And, uh, yeah, it was just one of them nights. I just felt good. Uh, it organically just happened, and uh, I was just on fire. Uh, it still, it was, it was another team that was, you know, trying to rebuild and trying to find a place. Uh, they didn't got rid of she, and we got rid of a lot of players uh, to be a contender again. But uh, that night just felt good. It really didn't matter whether it was Melo or anybody else. Uh, I just, it was just a good night for me. 47 off the bench. All right, we're in the final stretch here, Darius. Uh, are there any teams right now, East, West, both, that in your mind stand out as they will be in the finals? They have a real shot. Uh, you know, I, I got a, my guy, Jason Taylor, mm -hmm. you know, St. Louis boy. So, uh, you know, I think no Celtics is, is really standing out for me to be in the finals. Uh, I'm rooting for the Clippers in, in the West side to, to go. <laughs> That's about it. No, I, the lose too. I, the Kawhi thing last night was was a tough one. I'm, I got to ask you this because it'll settle the argument once and for all on this show, guys. Whatever he says goes. Who do you have as rookie of the year? Ooh. Mm. Uh, I got I got big Wimby. Yeah. Yes. There's an I, argument because Chandler won't do it. <laughs> Well, yeah, listen, yeah. His, rookie, his rookie year is insane. It's unbelievable. And I feel like we're literally talking about the rookie with similar stats on the worst team in the West with similar stats on the best team in the West. So I, I, does winning matter when you vote for this stuff? Maybe I know MVP, it, it does. For you know, All-Star, it does. So now Rookie of the Year, it doesn't. It's an individual award, you know. Uh, yeah, I think Wimby is... Man, it's just crazy, like, what he's capable of doing. And like I say, this is just his fill-out year. <laughs> like, it's going to be great. He, yeah. he could possibly win Defensive Player of the Year and Rookie of the Year. So it's, it's, it's getting ugly. My only ugly. problem, though, D, my only issue is we pick and choose who gets the, gets the, 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 the privilege of saying it's an individual award. Like, some guys are going to get judged based on wins and losses. And then you have guys like a Wimby who's in dead last, but the stats are so good, it's like, shit, it's, a, it's an individual award. That's where my beef come in. Like, if I'm Chet and I'm averaging close to 18 points a game and I'm basically, you know, on a lot of given nights, the second or third best player on that team, it ain't like I'm just a shoe-in or I'm just a throw-in on that team. And I'm, I've been flirting with from being on the team from one, to th uh, one, two, and three spots all season. Like, I would feel some way about that. You, you're definitely right. You, you, you should. But uh, we watched LeBron win the rookie of the year over Carmelo, and Carmelo made the playoffs the first year. And he led his team to the playoffs. You know, sometimes uh, shit true. happens. Case <laughs> closed. Case closed. Yeah. Jerry Smiles, my favorite guest we've ever had on the show. Uh, thank you for finalizing this argument once and for all, and I appreciate the answer. Uh, we appreciate the time as well, Darius. Thank you so much. Um, appreciate we will you be guys. Right back. Thank you. Yes, sir. Run it up, run it back, run it up.